uh, I was talking to my coach the other day and I was, you know, I had this spot that, Hey, you know, if I want to get better at judo, shouldn't I do, shouldn't I be doing judo every single day? He's like, Nope, not unless you're a kid. And he's like, you, you, there's only, there's a limit to how much your body could take. And he said, you're 42. Like, like, you know, like three times a week, judo. Three days a week. Now that doesn't mean you can't go in and, you know, um, just do like drill and fit in throws without the actual throw. You know, practice your favorite uh, setups, work on your timing a little bit with a cooperative partner, you know, and you can do that every day, but you can't, you can't go hard every day. No way, man. You just get yeah. burnt out. You know, that's why in most judo schools, anybody over 50 is very rare to find someone over 50. Mm-hmm. And when they are, they're pretty crippled up. <laughs> We had this one guy that used to train. We called him Judo Mark at Max Exercise. Uh, uh, Mark Companeus. He was a very, very good Judo player. I think he played some Judo Nationals a couple of times. But this poor guy, his favorite throw was drop sand Augie, but his knees were a mess. His feet and ankles. He, he, had to, he used to use duct tape instead of like regular athletic tape. And he would use almost like a half a wall of duct tape for each practice. Oh. I mean... Yeah, I mean, he just had to just tape his ankles and his feet and knees. And he put a knee pad on and just duct tape the heck out of his joints because they were almost completely damaged and ruined from the way he would go about doing his throw. Very explosive guy, but it really worked against him, you know? Yeah. And he yeah, had a guy that was doing explosive box jumps and, you know, that low jump where you jump repeatedly across the mat? You, you, you just really screw your knees up doing that kind of stuff, you know? It's just too much wear and tear. Mm-hmm. Your body you really does have, like, a, a, you know, a, like a, a limit to how much wear and tear it can do. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, uh, what, in terms of your joints, you think that it's possible to regenerate them, in a sense? Like, if you do no, have enough... What, once it's work, gone, it's been, and it's pretty gone. Yeah. What, once it's gone, it's gone, eh? It's gone, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. You know, you're not going to come back from osteoarthritis, whatever. Sometimes you can do some surgery and scrape it out or whatever. But the surgery, uh, it, it has its own risk, you know, secondary infections. And then the rehab is real bare on a lot of that stuff, you know. I've known people, they were told by the orthopedic guy that it's like a walk in the park. And six months later, they're still totally messed up from those type of surgery. So you never know how you're going to react. Better to avoid it if you could possibly do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, if your quality of life is so bad and you're in so much pain, okay, go for the surgery maybe. But if it's just mild discomfort, there's other ways you can mitigate that, you know? There's natural uh, herbal enzymes and things. I'm using turmeric, you know, and curcumin and some of these natural herbs that kind of keep the infl- inflammatory state down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so knowing that, like, what's your opinion on back squats and Jefferson curls? Because in both cases, you're loading the spine. And I mean, there's no reason to do either one of those. hmm? You know, the only people that should be doing uh, barbell back squats are power lifters, maybe Olympic lifters as as an assistance lift. Uh, There's no reason to do it. It really isn't. There's other ways you can load your legs up. Uh, you don't even need really, really heavy weight to meet your maximum strength. I know that sounds crazy, but it's not necessarily about the weight. It's about the effort. 